So, unless you've been living under a rock, pretty much everyone has heard about the Konami and Kojima situation. Bad breakup and all that. Well, some new news has come to light. Now, for those of you who don't know, there is a, um, a series of videos called Young's Codec Videos. Now, this is a show where they go and usually have a guest and interview them. That, that's essentially what I've heard anyway when it comes to them, because I'm not really a fan of theirs. I've just heard of them. So, now, they're doing an interview with the voice of Geralt. And at the end of it, one of Jan's... And I'm sorry if I'm butchering that name. I'm really not trying to. Jan's co-host was mentioning how he had an interview with the famous Rika Muranaka. Now, for those of you who don't know who Rika is, Rika is a, f a really, really well-known composer. And she made... Most of the music, if not all, for the Metal Gear series. Metal Gear Solid series, technically, whatever, get the point. And I'm going to read off a bit of the section that's um, pretty much throws everything in there I'm going to be talking about. And of course, I'm going to be providing a link in the description on where the video is. And at what part they start talking about the Rika interview. Okay. Now, the co-host is named, uh, Dali? Yeah, again, I'm really, really sorry if I'm mispronouncing anything. It's not my intention. Okay. <clears throat> Dali. The main reason for the falling out, at least in her opinion, is that Kojima gets paid a salary and doesn't make any profit share in the game. He gets paid a certain amount no matter what. And he was spending so much money and delaying the project, and adding all these features, and making sure the game was the biggest and best thing it could be. And Konami was unhappy with that, because delaying has no effect on him. He was spending the budget on this, and that, and upgrading the Fox engine and then delaying further because the engine wasn't ready. And Konami wasn't happy with that because he gets his salary and he takes a more traditional Japanese man approach by not taking a profit share. So in doing that, he gets a little more than a game creator would, but doesn't take the bonuses from the game selling well. Now that's quite interesting. Anyway, no, so Yun's response was... So you're telling me that Kojima wanting to make the game the best it can be is what started the conflict. Now the rest of it is just delay. I mean, delay, de delay. I I'm really sorry. I'm not trying to butcher this at all. Now, last part of this is from Dolly Daily. Delhi, I'm 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 really sorry. I'm not trying to mispronounce this at all. I'm 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 just a stupid American. <laughs> anyway, let me read the last bit now. Yes, in her eyes, Kojima's a fantastic creator and probably the best creator of his time, but he doesn't have a strong business sense like Konami would like him to have. Where instead of, for example, cutting corners by lowering foliage resolution, he wants to make sure everything looks as good and polished as possible. She said they pay for her to write 30 to 40 songs that end up not being used. And he tell her to write another one, then another one, and then another one, because he sells for what he likes and has a good mind for what people want to see and what people want to hear. She's worked directly with Konami for music before, so she does have some insight. And personally believes that the music has suffered in MGS5 because she's not part of it. Because they couldn't afford her. So instead of paying her to go to all these people and recruit them for the music, they choose to remove her from the equation and go to the people directly. 
Well, that's all very interesting, isn't it? All very, very interesting. Now, let's say that this is the case. That this is what started the conflict. This would actually make a lot of sense. Because as Rika has stated, um, he really cared about getting the game to be the best polished game it could be. And he would just spend outrageous amounts of money in some cases. Now, I will say, I do think it's a very sad state of affairs for the gaming industry. When a developer is doing his damnness to make sure a game is the best game it can possibly be, is a problem. Man, it makes me worry. But, as we, most of us, anyway, should know or do know, whatever, um, Kojima was very famous for being eccentric when it came to his um, creation process. He would spend a ridiculous amount of time and money and resources, and it wasn't like just a normal amount for a game which is millions nowadays. Ugh. Man, that's a lot of money. But for him, like, let's say, for example, the budget for a game was $5 million. Let's just say, for example... Kojima would probably spend forty million because he just is ridiculous. Not in a bad way. I actually agree with Rika. I think he is one of the greatest creators of our time. Though unfortunately, he doesn't really quite know when to stop. He actually, um, while working with Konami, um. We had one fellow, I, I honestly forgot his name, I do apologize. But anyway, this one fellow who was essentially his right hand man, it would probably just, uh, his job was essentially to tell Kojima, no, we aren't doing this. <laughs> because he was just full of so many ideas and he would just want to go everywhere with them and he had to have some limits. But I think this is probably what happened. It probably just became too much and they wanted to get rid of him. But that does beg the question of why they would remove all of his his logos and everything from every product that Kojima made. It's one thing to let go of someone who is just costing you too much money, whether it be a good or a bad employee. But it's another thing to essentially erase their name from the history books, more or less. It feels like something personal must have happened, a little more than just, oh, I'm sorry, but you cost us too much money. Well, if you take into account and believe the Kotaku articles, well, article, I should say, saying they had an inside source um, give them information about how um, people were being let go and how conditions in the, uh, I think it was the Kojima Productions and some other places in Konami. My memory is a little, a little off on that because it's been a bit since I read it. But the point is, is they would actually create situations where, like, just a lot of inconveniences or at least it seemed to just be coincidence. But basically, um, they would create the situations where someone would want to quit of their own accord. And there was also a, a bunch of layoffs, apparently, but it was very slow, if memory serves. And also sneaky methods. Some people say it's coincidence, you know, like, um, if I'm correct, I think they're saying things like key cards would stop working, doors would lock themselves, a bunch of other really kind of shady stuff. But again, these are rumors, so Kotaku you can kind of only take with a grain of salt since they um, didn't really have a source they could name. But if that were true, let's just say it was true, and let's say that they um, actually did have this, that this stuff happen. 
that would mean that they were planning on getting rid of Kojima for a, a while, or at least a bunch of other people. It just it just sheds a little light on what maybe what started the conflict, most likely. But it doesn't really answer the question of what really happened, and it must have been really bad for them to want to essentially erase his name from his word. That's, oh, that's that's pretty damn bad. What I'm going to guess is that these two people just had a fight. We're all human. And people don't like to admit that, especially corporations, don't like to admit when their CEO has let a personal matter get to a point of actually reaching the news, essentially. So I understand why they want to keep it quiet. My guess is just that when uh, the CEO of Konami was talking to Kojima, saying, you know, can't keep on spending all this money, and yada, 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 I'm going to assume some kind of fight broke out. Not a fist fight, you know. I, I doubt it was a fucking fist fight. I mean, come on. But it was probably some kind of argument. And then, uh, Konami just said, fuck it, most likely, and just pulled the plug. At least that's what it seems like. I'll say this, though. After Metal Gear Solid 5, I, I'll probably never get an Iron Metal Gear Solid game again. Without Kojima working on it, it's just not going to be the same. Well, with all that being said, I'm going to leave a few links in the description for some of my sources. Um, the post that actually shed light on this new information was actually on Reddit. So I'm going to post a link to the Reddit post that gave me this information. And in that Reddit post, you're actually going to find a link to the video. And um, if I remember correctly, he has a timestamp of where um, they start talking about Rika, the Rika interview. So if you want more information, I would suggest you please look at the description. And with all that said, as always, we'll see you in the next video. If you like what we call videos around here, please like, favorite, subscribe, anything you can do would be greatly appreciated. And as always, we'll see you in the next video.